Hi everyone, Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And yes, once again, I'm sorry, we have a Boeing 707 derivative on the bench. Now, um, if you remember, last week I did a review of this kit after seeing it on Amazon for like 30 quid. And uh, I bought one, in fact I've bought two now. But basically, uh, a guy called Anthony Davis got in touch with me and said, um, these engines are wrong. In the kit so i said uh no 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 i said you're thinking of the um the british or the french version that had the um the uh, cf56 engines cfm56 engines he said no 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 he said i know they're tf33s but they're wrong everybody gets to wrong for the e3s so i started looking into it and blimey me he's right have a look at this picture and look at this engine okay and bear in mind look at the pylons on the front Look at the radius, how they come down on the front. Look also at the, the main part of the engine. It's just cylindrical. It has no bulges or anything on it. And this part here is quite long. So this artist impression of an E3 Century is actually correct. The kit is wrong. You see, what Heller have done, they've used their Boeing 707 kit. There's a picture of one here. Um, as the basis for this model and they've just taken the engines over so let's have a look back at a bit of history a minute okay so um, the 707 had the JT3D engine which is the engine you get in this kit in the Heller kit and you can see there it is and if you notice it's got a bulge on the bottom of the main engine here all right um, and you can see that this part here is quite short. And you can also see that on these pylons, they have like an auxiliary air intake at the front of the pylon there. All right. So that pylon's overhanging the front of the engine. And then the outboard engines don't have it. Okay. So in fact, one outboard engine doesn't have it. We've got three engines with it. And one outboard engine that doesn't have it. So it's just got a straight pylon coming down and just ending further back from the front edge of the intake but bear in mind we've got this great big bulge so, so keep that in mind so that's the Heller offering now the KC135 had a TF33 P5 which was to all intents and purposes the same engine although I'm not sure if the 707 had a slightly larger intake I don't know because the KC135 took its engines from the 707 but if we look here we can see the um, this is the AMT TF33 for the KC135 series and you can see the difference in size with that and the Heller equivalent so I know AMT I've got a bit of history in getting engines too small um, like all other B-52s so it could just be that but it does look like the actual rear part of the engine is pretty much the same size if you look there at the Heller on the AMT so it could be that this lower this smaller bypass part is the lesser power because some 707s had 19,000 pounds of thrust depending on the engine variant and this was 18,000 pounds of thrust and don't forget the earlier, the, the, the really early KC-135s and everything had the old J-57, which was the old engine here, which had no bypass on it at all. It was a turbo jet rather than a turbo fan. So, um, so yeah, a massive thank you to Anthony Davis for pointing that out. So I started looking around and the first thing I found was this. And these are resin engines from Flight Path, a guy called DJ Barkin over in South Wales. And these are lovely for what they cost, they're only a few quid. And these are beautiful. These are your the front of the engines for the J57. So if you're doing an old 707 or you're doing a KC135 or um, you know anything with the old J5700, the old turbojet, you can see that that is a lot nicer than that. Okay. Um, this has a very, very rounded soft edge. And also there's no sort of intake tube. So you stick this fan into there behind and you've got this great hollow opening. Whereas with this, you've got the, 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 the sort of parallel intake going into the fan and the fan detail at the back is gorgeous. So they are lovely. And for, as I say, for what they cost, they're, they're peanuts. So um, 
a great update there. So that is 72105 is a label Hannants have put on there. So it could be that that's the part number. It could be that it's Hannants own number, but there is no part number on here. It's Boeing 135, a Boeing 135 series J57 engine cowlings. So they're designed for the AMT kits. So these engines may be slightly small as well. I've had a look and Heller never actually did a 707 with the J57 engine. So I don't know. It actually wasn't a J57, was it? It was a JT3C, wasn't it? I think. Um, whatever. So going back to the going back to the Heller engines for the E3 century, as we can see here, um, they are just absolutely completely wrong. I'll put a picture up now. You can see the E3 century engines there. I'll come back to the kit parts and then I'll go back to the photograph and you can see what I mean. Look at this bulged area here. Look how small this is. And uh, you can see that, yeah, basically the, um, the kit parts are correct for a 707, but they're not correct for a E3 century and Anthony has actually made me aware that uh, there is a lot of false information online because people just immediately think that the E3 use 707 engines now if you want to use these engines okay on your Heller AWACS what you need to do is convert it into a E8 um, joint stars aircraft here's a picture of one here and you can see that has got the old 707 style engines on it with the bulge with the air intakes in the pylons so there we go so once again if you want to replace those engines this kit is no longer getting cheap this this costs more than the kit <laughs> this is the US uh, US Air Force NATO E3 century detail and conversion set for Airfix or Heller kits super detailed set super detailed set in resin photo etched brass and cast metal provides radome airframe and undercarriage details includes resin molded TF 33 engine set you can see there's the company there djparkins.com or you can get your stuff from Hannans so this was about 32 pounds um, so yeah as I say it costs more than the bloody kit that's what it is there so I'll stick that there and then we have a nice set of instructions and then we have bags of resin we have that radome for the roof that's going to go on the roof of the aircraft that's in white metal and then we have four engines here you can see that they are lovely and then in the bottom of here we have this lovely foam as well with this black cover on it i have to use that when i'm um, when i'm doing photo etch for uh, you know for um, previews so we'll have a look at that in a second um metal or multimedia conversion kit for advanced modelers requires experience to build and complete unsuitable for children there we go so that's that over there that can stay there so you can see what it is and then we'll have a look at all the kit parts in a minute so as usual we'll have a look at the instructions first so we've got a4 printed paper and you can see we've got this is the same as the one i showed you last week when i did the kit review we've got stiffener frames for the windows we've got these bits and pieces with windscreen wipers We've got interior door details if you want to have the door shown open. We've got exterior door details. Uh, we've got that uh, lip there. We've got all the um, static dischargers there. And then we've got the uh, the bits and pieces there for the... Um, where are they going? On the wing tips? 7, 8, 9 and 10 are fitted around each of the main doors on the port side. These are marked as decals in the kit. But you should use parts for the forward door and parts seven eight for the rear door. We've got eight and nine there. That is not a door. <laughs> um, laminate pitot heads from parts five and six and use these three places in the kit. Parts eight and nine and three fret do not apply to US Air Force. Okay, so they're not applying to US Air Force. You do need to study these instructions because they're not one hundred percent like you know clear because it's designed for advanced modelers. And then over the page we've got more details. So you can see we've got the. Um, the cast antenna unit there, we've got these fairings for the CFM56 engines, which we don't have in our kit. And then we've got the, um, the photo etch details there for the main radar itself, which is really nice. Um, we'll see that in a minute, it's lovely. And then we've got our door handles there, and then we've got bits and pieces for the undercarriage. And then this is for the front undercarriage. Remember, we've also got the, um, the Bren gun set as well, which is absolutely loaded with details for the undercarriage and bays and stuff. 
Um, so here, when it comes to the TF333 engines, remove the shaded areas from the kit parts as shown. OK, so here's your kit parts. And what you're going to basically do is cut straight up there. Okay, so it's showing you level with the back of there. You're going to cut that up. And then your resin engines are going to fit onto the existing pylons. So you're getting rid of this incorrect front pylon and this incorrect front intake part, which is too small, and adding this one and then adding the correct rear engine. Cut the feeds from both the front and rear section of, of the engine mouldings and fit to the pylons in place of the kit items, adding etch webs part 14 from E3, E3 front as noted in diagram. So you can see here, cutting that off, we're going to put a piece of photo etch in there and then... Uh, Line up resin moulders at this point, and it's saying we've got an 8th out gap. I guess if you line this up perfectly, you end up with a gap there. What you could do is just cut that off short and leave it a bit long and then sand it back to suit that. And you could, you could cut it off a couple of mil forward. Yeah, and then add your main, your main engine part and then sand your pylon off flush with the front of the engine and then do that. That's another way of doing it, just another way around it. We've got more static dischargers there going on the tail pins. And that is that. It's, it's fairly, um, it looks fairly simple, although there is quite a lot in the set. So here we can see we have our photo etch. And uh, David's photo etch is always very nice. I've got quite a few of his sets here. Um, he's a lovely chap to speak to as well, to communicate with. So we have, here's our frets. Now these are obviously, because... Um, this is also a set for the other one with the CFM56 engines. Then there's obviously bits taken off of here. So you've got the sort of remainder here. So we've got a fret for the undercarriage. And this is where this bit of black is going to come in handy. So we've got a fret for the undercarriage there. Notice I haven't got the light on so I don't get all the reflections. So you've got your oleos there. We've got bits and pieces here. And we've got our actual uh, wheel rims and brake details there. So that's all very nice. And then here we've got the... This is the uh, mounting area for the actual main radar. And then we've got some antenna, some doors and stuff and bits and pieces there. That's all very nice. Then we have here, this is the um, E3 Century, E6 Mercury and E8 Joint Stars conversion sets. Now he does, um, if you look on Hannance or if you look on the DJ Parking website, as I said, you can go and look you can build the Heller kit as an E8 joint stars, but you need that bulge that goes along the bottom. So you can either scratch build that or something. Um, but the, all of this applies. So if you want to go and get this kit, it looks like these engines are incorrect for the E8 joint stars. It's all getting quite confusing, really. Um, so we've got all sorts of bits of antenna and stuff. We've got interior door details there, should you want to have your door open. You've got this photo etch panel here, which is going to go onto the rear of the fuselage. And you've got this piece here, which you cut out. And then that you scribe into the body into the body of the aircraft and you make a recess so that that actually sits in we've got some mesh there we've got another door there lots and lots of little details and little bits and pieces so it's all very nice and then here we've got the actual main um this is the main part we've got loads of antenna going on in the middle and this is actually going to go over and under your radar so it's very nice indeed um, and then here, these these are the rings that go onto the back of the engines. I'll show you them again in a sec. So they're going to give you a detail on the engine. But you can see on here, rather than just have the soft moulded connectors that they have on the original, because I think what it is, I think it's basically a, a central boom with two great big fairings added, which makes it into a disc. And I think these here are all the connectors that hold those big fairings on. And on the kit, they're just moulded as like soft lines. Whereas here, you've got the lovely details. So very nice indeed. So that's that. So we'll have a look at the um, the engines. I'll just get one out because they're all the same. There's one. There's two. Right. So we have our our TF thirty threes for the. Uh, these are actually TF thirty three PW one hundred A. Um, I, I noticed on Wikipedia it says the KC-135 uses a TF-33P-102. Um, it doesn't. The, T, the TF-33 
P5 was basically the militarized version of the JT3D. And as the all the KC135As converted to E's were using second-hand 707 engines. So there you go. So there we go. There's the beautiful intake detail on there. I think I'll put the light on for this. Got the dim setting. You can see all that lovely detail in there on the intake. You've got the nice tube and everything rather than just having an open shell, which is the kit parts has got again. And then here's your main engine part here. As you can see, no bulge on the bottom. Got a slight flat on the sides there. And you can see that when that goes together, that's going to give you your lovely your lovely correct engine for your E3 Century. And just to show you how well, because I have had a little play with this, um, just to show you how well this fits. Uh, here we go, we'll use this one. You can see on here we have, this is coming along here and then it's got a step. Now remember you're going to cut your front off and use these pylons. But look at that. Look at how lovely that fits in there. Very nice indeed. So that is going to be your corrected engine and that is basically going to go over there. You can see the difference in size. This is about 17 millimeters and this is about 19 and a half. It's about two and a half millimeters bigger. But you can also see when you build this, you're going to look in there. It's just going to be a great hollow cavern, whereas it should be a like a straight tube. Whereas, you know, this one see it's so much nicer it's the sort of the radius continues around to the inside like jet engines always do so yeah very nice indeed um there's our wheels and we've got those all those rings to go on so you can see there how they're going to fit so it's just to enhance the detail that's already on there whether you want to use it or not i don't know um oh i wanted to show you those rings as well didn't i these rings Obviously, when you put these two parts together, when you look at the back of the engine, you're just going to see this, this plane where well, you're going to sand this flat. First. You're just going to see that plane area. So this ring goes on here like that. OK. And then when you put your let's see if I can hold this all in one. When you put your engine on like so, you will see the the detail at the back there so that won't look so bad just get some matte black in there and uh and then you know dry brush that highlight it it's going to look bloody lovely so there we are so that is that is the usaf nato e3 century detail and conversion set um as i say they have this at hannant's 31.99 i think it was um they also have it over on the dj parking website flight path whatever but djparkins.com and um yeah, go fill your boots, go and have a look and, uh, and, and build a nice, accurate E3 and stick it on a show stand next to somebody else's who's built one from the box and go, ha <laughs> ha, if you feel that way inclined. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, any questions, pop them down in the comments below and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.